So for this problem, um, what we have in store here is we have 3 sixteenths plus uh, 0.175. Now, when doing a problem like this, um, basically what we need to make sure that we do is have, we're adding a fraction plus a decimal. Now, we have not spoken yet in this class how to convert decimals to fractions, but we will be doing that within the next week. Um, however, we have spoken about how to convert a, a fraction to a decimal. And to convert, OK, I got some problems here. That's not good. Let's put that away, far, far away. So when we're converting a fraction to a decimal, basically all we're using is long division. All right? And I'm going to show you guys how to do this without a calculator, even though I know a calculator would be preferred if you're using the ACT, SAT. But also for the PERT test, though, we're not going to have calculators. Right? So it's important for you guys at least understand the process for that. But if I convert these both to decimals, I can add them, right? All right. So let's convert this to a decimal. So 16 divided by 3. Now, obviously, 16 does not divide into 3, so we're going to have to put in a decimal point. Now, once we put in a decimal point, we pretty much have a unique bank of as many zeros as we possibly want to use. All right, But we're only going to use as many as we need. So we always want to find the smallest number that 16 would divide into, which in this case is 30. 16 divides into 30 one time. 1 times 16 is 16. Subtract the two terms, 30 minus 16 is going to be 14. Now, unfortunately, though, 16 does not divide into 14. So we bring down one of our banks of our zeros. Now we need to determine how many times does 16 go into 140. And if I didn't have a calculator, this could be kind of daunting for me. Well, one thing that I always like to do when I'm thinking about numbers, Savannah, especially trying to identify 16 times what is 140, rather than just using the guess and check method, what I can do is just write down multiples of 16. 16, 32. 48, 64, 80, 96, and dot, 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 dot. You can keep on going. Um, but what I notice is, now the next thing is, anytime you take a multiple, if you multiply that multiple by 2, it's still a multiple of 16. For instance, 32 times 2 is 64. Is that a multiple? Yeah. Yes. So what would be the, the largest number that I can multiply by 2 that would still be less than 140? And you can see 64. So 64 times 2 is 128. So to get here, it's so multiples, I have to multiply 16 by 1, 2, 3, 4, times that by 2 would be 8, meaning 16 divides into 140 eight times. Now let's check our work, make sure we did that correctly. Um, 8 times 16. 8 times uh, 6 is 48, times 4, 8 times 4. 128. Yes, that works, right? So then I put 128 down here, and I subtract. 140 minus uh, 28 is going to be 12. 16, does, again, does not go into 12. So I bring down my next 0. Now, again, I can use that same thought process. 16 divided by, or how many times does 16 go into 128? Again, look at these numbers. What is the largest number that I can double to give me less than um, 120? Well, this was 128, so it has to be 48. 48 times 2 is 96. Now, could I add 16 to 96, and then that will still be less than 120? Yeah. Yes. And when I do that, I so therefore, it goes in there 1, 2, 3 times 2 would be 6 times. 6 times 16, let's just double check, make sure we do our work correctly. Um, 36. No, some 96. Oh, no, I'm sorry. So at 96, it doesn't go in there more than six times. It goes in there at least one more time, I'm sorry, which would be seven. Sorry about that. I don't know why I did that. So let's double check what would seven. That would be two, four, seven. That's 11. So 112. So I bring down 112, subtract. 120 minus 112 is 8. 16 does not go into 8. Bring down my last zero. Does 16 divide into 80? Yes, it divides in there one, two, three, four, five times. All right, I know, guys, this is a long way. You're like, I'm just going to use a calculator on the ACT, and that's fine. All right? But on the PERT test, they give you a problem like this. That's exactly what you'd have to do. All right? So now I can just add, I have two decimals. So remember, when we're adding decimals on your test, you have to align the decimals with the decimal point. Any vacant spots will use 0. Now I basically just add using the vertical method. 5 plus 0 is 5. 7 plus 5 is 12. Carry over the 1. 7 plus 8 is 15, plus 1 is 16. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, and that's point. So your final answer is 
625, which is letter H. Anybody have any questions on that?